Well, good morning, and here I am again in another very interesting part of New York City. It's going to be a beautiful day out here. I guess it's going to be 80 degrees in New York City today. It's just crazy considering it's still the middle of April. So good morning. I am Kenny Polcar, your host of the party, and today is Wednesday, April 12th, 2023, and here are the things you need to know, right? Stocks continue to churn as investors await today's CPI report and tomorrow's PPI report, right? Bond yields move up just a tiny bit, right? And that will continue to uh, be a headwind for stocks, at least in the near term. Gold is holding steady at $2,025 an ounce, while oil remains above $80 a barrel. And there are mixed messages out of the Fed heads yesterday, but expect rates to rise in May at the next meeting. And what do we have for dinner tonight? We're having the Italian-style sweet and sour chicken. Mm, so delicious. All right, so listen, we'll get to that in a moment. Stocks continue to meander as they await today's inflation read, and then any signal that the Fed is either staying the course or changing the course, right? Yesterday, Chicago Fed President Austin Goolsbee told the Economic uh, Club of Chicago that at, and I quote this, at moments like this of financial stress, the right monetary approach calls for prudence and patience, suggesting that he's thinking the Fed should stop raising rates, saying that we need to be cautious. He went on to say that the bank lending surveys showed that banks are already tightening loan standards and that would help to slow economic growth. And he's right, that will and that he was also gonna pay particular attention to the anecdotal data before making any decision about what to do next. He then said that we should not stop prioritizing the fight against inflation. So it's a little bit of a mixed message. Is he, is he for rate uh, heights or is he for a pause, right? So we're gonna find that out uh, in a couple of weeks. He was supported then though by Philly Fed President Patty Harker, who also said the Fed should show greater caution moving forward, pointing out that it could take 18 months uh, uh, for any rate increase to kind of influence the economic activity through the economy. But remember, Patty has pushed to get the rate above 5%, and that would imply that he is going to vote in favor of another 25 basis point increase because then that would get the terminal rate to the five, five and a quarter percent range, exactly where we said JJ has wanted it. He identified that. Um, uh, as the range that he wanted to get to. And then once he gets there, he wants to kind of hold the, hold it steady there. And then we got New York's Johnny Williams, right? Fed President Johnny Williams chimed in saying that he saw no evidence yet that businesses or consumers were strongly influenced by changing lending standards and that he would need to see signs that core inflation really coming down which would also suggest that he's uh, he's on board for another rate hike, right, at 25 basis point hike. Remember, official projections by the 18 officials at the Fed have suggested another hike, if not two more hikes, but at least one more, reminding us that last week's uh, uh, non-farm payroll report continues to show a strong labor market and that the U.S. services PMIs remain in expansionary territory, and that's an issue because the U.S. economy is a 75% services economy. In the end, my sense is that unless today Today's CPI completely surprises to the downside, which I don't think it's going to do, then we need to get ready for another uh, rate increase in May. And the market is prepared for that. By the end of the day yesterday, the Dow uh, added 98 points. Yes, if he was flat, uh, the Nasdaq lost 53 points. The Russell gained 14 points. And the transports, once again, uh, was the star performer adding 183 points. Word around the street is that the hedge fund community is building a very large short position in the markets as general as they apparently expect a significant decline in prices in what's ahead. Bank of America comes out and tells us that their data shows that clients are selling equities across the board as they await today's inflation print, which is just a bit curious, right? Because if their clients are selling stocks, that means somebody has to be buying them. And stocks haven't moved significantly one way or the other in the recent last couple of days because nothing happens in a vacuum, right? There's always two sides to a trade. There's a seller and a buyer, which just means that while Bank of America's clients might be might be nervous in selling equities. There are other clients that are clearly who are not, that they see a longer term opportunity here. Because remember, if the data is good and suggests that the rate hikes are over after the May hike, then I would expect to see the market rally. Uh, and if those shorts uh, are as big as they say they are, then watch out because those short sellers become buyers, right? In order to cover the position. And that just fuels an advance, right? You understand? 
Now, if inflation runs hotter than expected, then those shorts are going to be correct, right? Because then the market, the buyers will retreat because the Fed will continue to raise rates beyond May. We'll get lower prices, stocks will fall, so the shorts will be correct. At some point, they will then have to become buyers to cover, right? So sit tight. We're just we're just now moments away from knowing that answer. Tomorrow then brings us the PPI report, and that's expected to decline fairly significantly. And if that's true, then the next month's CPI should also reflect that decline in prices. And that would give strength to the argument that the Fed is accomplishing their goal. Next up is earnings season. And many analysts continue to believe that estimates have to come down even more than they have. And then at some point, that will put pressure on stocks. But remember, any company that is not going to meet the current estimates should forewarn. Otherwise, they risk getting completely completely slammed on earnings day when they do, right? Because then investors will sit there and say, what were you thinking? How could you have let the estimates stay as high if you knew damn well that you were going to miss them by a significant amount? Anyway, it's all about to get started on Friday. Bond yield yesterday moved up just a bit with the two-year yielding 4.05%, up from 3.98. The 10 years yielding 3.43, up from 3.39. While shorter duration yields are continue to kiss the 5% range, and that is what will keep kind of a lids on stocks, at least in the short term, especially if people are nervous, they'll put some money into short-duration treasuries and earn 5%. Oil continues to trade above $80 a barrel, something that makes the Saudis very happy, but it makes Joey unhappy. And this is the wild card, because as gas prices, as energy prices move up, over, then gas prices are going to move up, right? Energy prices are moving up. And those recent increases are not going to be factored into today's CPI report, because they just happened. The move will be reflected next month and the month after. So if oil continues to move higher this month, then we can expect CPI to reflect that next month. Remember, after last week's announcement, the Saudis and OPEC Plus are cutting production. Oil surged higher and is now above all three trend lines, setting us up to test the November highs, which is $90 a barrel, up another $10 from where we are today. Gold holding steady at 2025 an ounce. Traders betting that the May rate hike is going to be the last. And if that's the case, then gold has room to move higher, right? We remain firmly in the 2,2100 trading range. Uh, and I suspect that if that's the case, we'll see gold uh, kiss that 2100 fairly soon. This morning, U.S. futures are up small, slightly. Nothing big. Dow futures up 70. S&Ps are up 5. Nasdaq up 2. The Russell is up 1. Investors focusing on the inflation report as as I said, uh, you know the deal. The tightening cycle is about to come to an end, and while earnings season is expected to be mixed at best, no one is suggesting that it's going to be a disaster, other than Morgan Stanley's Mikey Wilson. So sit tight. Build a defensive portfolio. Think big, boring, mega cap names that will weather the storm. And if you're nervous, put some money into short duration treasuries. But be prepared to make a shopping list because there's an opportunity just ahead of you. European markets are open and they are slightly higher, up about four tenths of a percent across the board. The IMF put out a fairly weak report yesterday suggesting that global growth is going to be the weakest in 30 years, blaming the results on the recent banking turmoil. Again, it's great they put it out there. That's not really going to have an effect uh, on markets at all. The S&P closed at 4108. Right, just off less than a less than a point, flat on the day, really. Right, leaving it just below the most recent highs of forty-one twenty-eight. It feels like the market is at a crossroads. Right, not sure to go up or go down. Uh, if the market backs off, I suspect it's going to find plenty of support at the trend line, which is four thousand and thirty. And if it advances, it's going to find plenty of resistance at forty-two hundred. So, in my mind, we remain in that 4,030, 4,200 trading range until something significant happens. Now, what are we having for dinner? We're having the sweet and sour chicken, Italian style, right? So this is marinated chicken thighs. Now, you can always use breast, but the truth is the thighs are always juicier and the dark meat is always better. It's not a difficult dish to make at once. Uh, you simmer it. You have to take, you're going to have time to take a shower, set the table, break open the wine, and really enjoy the night once you get it going. So for this, you're going to need olive oil. You need salt and pepper, you need diced onion, chopped carrots, chopped celery, plenty of sliced garlic cloves, right? Uh, at least six, maybe seven or eight. You need a quarter cup of sugar, one cup of Chianti, uh, a half a cup of red wine vinegar. You need a half a cup of orange juice with the pulp. You need sliced almonds, which are optional, but they're always delicious for this dish. Now, season the chicken with salt and pepper, then set it aside. Take a heavy frying pan uh, that's going to accommodate it all. Heat up some olive oil. Now, brown the chicken first on all sides. And after you brown it, remove it and put it on a platter. Keep the skin on because the skin is going to give it flavor. So just make it nice and brown. Now, after you do that, now add the garlic, the carrots, the celery, the onion. Saute all that for 10 minutes over medium heat. 
Now add the sugar, the wine, the vinegar, the orange juice, and the almonds. Bring it all to a boil, and then put the chicken back in skin side up. Place a lid uh, just off the center, just so the, the steam can escape. Cook that for about 30 minutes. Turn the heat down to medium low. Um, this is the time now, leave it there for 30 minutes. This is the time now, you run upstairs, take a shower, get dressed, set the table and get it all ready. Now, when you come back, remove the chicken, place on a big platter, serve this family style, um, just, and then turn the heat up and stir it until the, everything else in the sauce gets nice and thick, right? Maybe another five minutes or so. Taste it, adjust the seasoning with salt and pepper, spoon the sauce over the chicken pieces and then serve it. This dish works well with a green vegetable, something like French cut green beans or broccoli, steamed broccoli, make a large mixed green salad, add the tomatoes, the red onion, and the cucumbers, right? Dress it in a, uh, you know me, I dress it in fresh lemon juice, olive oil, salt, pepper, and oregano, right? Just toss it. I think that's a go-to uh, salad dressing for me. It's simple to make, and it's always good. It always tastes fresh, and it really works with any meal, and it works particularly well with this one. In any event, look, here I am in New York City. You have to guess where I am. Until tomorrow, take good care.